in this current world of information technology more and more applications are added in our life every single day and almost all these applications require their users to have dedicated accounts with username and passwords remembering these massively growing passwords is a big hassle on top majority of people use very weak passwords and reuse them on different websites which is very insecure you are supposed to use strong and unique passwords on all websites and you don't need to remember all of these passwords but wait how can you generate strong unique passwords for every single website and how can you use them without remembering well that's where passwords manager applications come into the picture password managers store your login information for all the websites that you use and help you log into them automatically they encrypt your password database with a master password the master password is the only one that you have to remember as soon as you provide the master password you are able to access all of your application or website specific passwords in this video we are going to discuss a password manager known as keepass keepass is one of the world's most widely used password manager and is completely free to use along with every account entry it helps you to store the following information the username the password the website that username and password relates to basically and then the additional notes and then maybe if you have some file attachments related to that account or maybe if you have some pictures and snapshots related to that account you can consider an account as a Facebook or maybe a YouTube account so now first let's discuss how we can download it so that we start using it in order to download keepass you need to head over to the official website of keepass which is keepass.info here on the very left you can see this option of downloads you can click on it and then you have basically two options for using keepass so you can use you can either use this portable version of keepass which means you can download it and it's going to be a zip file which you can keep on a usb stick or hard disk or maybe anywhere that you do not need to install it you can simply open the application and you can use it right away and the second option here is that you are going to install it on your operating system in windows and yeah then you're going to use it and link it with the database files so we're going to see both of the options so we're going to download this portable version in the first place we yeah so it's going to start in five seconds and right away we have it downloaded then we can see it here that it's already in the downloads folder so we're going to cut and so I've already connected a USB drive and I'm going to put it here inside this one this zip file and then we need to unzip it so right click and extract all and it's going to extract that and it's going to put it exactly in one of the other directories inside the USB stick so here I have this one the unzipped one so this is the executable file so if I click it I am going to open keypass application so this is fine we're gonna hit enter and now we can so right now we're going to select a database file because in order to use keypass you will be needing a database file in which you'll have all the passwords so in this case I just wanted to show you that you can keep this portable version on a USB stick and you can use it and then you can link it to the database files and right now the database file is also already on this USB stick so you can click it here and here this is kdbx file so you hit double click and then you need to provide a password and that's it then you will be able to use it now let's see the second option and then we can get back to how we are going to use it step by step so for that you need to download this installer and it also takes around five seconds to download 
so once it's downloaded you are going to execute the setup and basically pretty straightforward steps and yeah hit next next and it's going to get installed on your local machine once you have keepass installed the first thing you need to do is to create a database file and this database file will be storing all of the passwords inside it so to create a database you need to hit file and then click on new and then new database and click ok and you need to pick a path and let's give it a name database 1 and then press enter so now we need to understand that we have three possible options to encrypt this database file so we need to understand that in order to access this database file we are going to have a master password so once you provide this password you will be able to access the file and when you access the file it means you can access all of uh, all of the passwords inside it you can add new passwords you can delete entries and you can manage it the way you want to be but before accessing the file we need to define how we would like how we would like to encrypt the file so we have three possible options so if you're good at remembering the passwords then you need to select this first password which we call is this first option which we call it as master password so you need to provide a password just a random uh, combination of different characters and that's how we encrypt it the second way is that if you're not good at remembering the passwords then you need to click this option key file or provider this means this is going to generate a strong password for you you don't need to remember what password it is but it's ultimately going to create a file for you and this file you need to put it in some secure location and every time you want to access this database you need to provide this file as the key and that's how it works and the third way is windows user account so this one automatically detects the username and password of your windows account and then you are able to access it you don't need to do anything but this means that if someone takes away your database which has all the passwords so he cannot open that on his machine because your windows machine it should have a special it should have a unique username and a unique strong password so in this way also the file in the database file is secure so let's see all of these three options one by one very quickly so master password we provide uh, one two three four five six just let's make it simple and just repeat the password and it's telling that estimated quality so the quality is quite poor of this password but it's okay we don't want to complicate the things for now so then press ok press ok and then give it a database file uh, name, name of the database file so we call it db1 and one means like it's the first option right so one and then you press ok and it's an emergency sheet so you can just print some of the most critical information to access this database and you can like print it and save it but we're gonna skip it for now and that's it you have the database created and here we can manage all the entries so we're going to close it and we see other two options and then we come back and then we see how we can manage different passwords how we can add delete and like there's a lot of cool stuff in here so right now we click on save and so here you can see on the very left the database file is already created because that's where the passwords will be stored so you click on file and you close it now we look for the second option so you click on file you create a new database and you give it name you 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 give it let's suppose database 2 and you click on save and now this time we don't go for master password but we're going to get uh, like a master key file created so you click on key file and then here you need to create a password so you click on create and create a new file random key blah 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 so this looks good and you're gonna hit ok and the cool thing is you need to just like randomly move your cursor here in this in this area 
and as soon as you're moving it it's somehow detecting different bits and it's randomly providing seed to your password and that's it so it creates the password so I think that's it we're, we're complete so it's I would say yeah very strong and yeah very very secure password 256 bits generated for this one so we don't need to do anything where you click on OK and where you will be storing this key file so once again on the desktop and we call it let's suppose db underscore key and then you click on save and that's it you can see here the key file has been created and you click on ok and then let's give it a database name we call it database db2 we can even provide colors if we want but it's okay for now so you click on ok and then skip the emer emergency sheet and there you go you have the database as soon as I click on save I can see the database file is created here on the very left so this database file will be storing all the passwords so now very quickly we can see the third option and then we get back to start using it so you click on file and you click on close that's it and our third possible option is you click on new and the new database and then once again you call it database 3 and you hit save and you don't need to go for master password but rather windows user account it's I would say most simple one you click on OK provide a database name db3 OK you skip it and that's it you have the database created now as I said the very first database it's going to get the master password that you have created the second database it's going to get this keys file as the password and it's provide access to the database so the third database you don't need to provide anything if it's the same windows login then you're gonna access that right away so you close it and now click on file and then click on open open file and we're gonna open this first one so you need to provide the password which was one two three four five six so you, you only need to remember the master password but it needs to be strong enough so that it protects all of the passwords beneath that so you click on OK and that's it you have been granted the access to that you click on close and now we open the second one so open this second one and now automatically it has this address of this key file so you can see here on the desktop db underscore key file so you provide this key file and that's it you have access to the database and now we can see this third option so you open file and then third one and it's just like Windows user account and right away it basically accesses all the data underlying that the credentials and you click on OK and you're able to access it so that's how you can in the first place you need to create a database file you need to go for different multiple encryption options and you select one of them so once we created a uh, keypass database so the next step is we need to understand how we maintain different passwords how we create new passwords and how we maintain the hierarchy of different directories inside this database so the first thing is here you if you see in general so you can create here multiple directories based on the use case for example if a student would be creating a new database so he'll have multiple groups for example first group would be like I call it university so all university related accounts are going to get under this folder and so let's create a second group and this will be let's suppose social media so this guy is going to store all the social media accounts information inside this group and then the third group will be let's suppose mailboxes like private mailboxes and he's gonna store information of different box mailboxes here so once we and the good thing is you can create as many subfolders inside this as you want like you can create a new group and then it's going to be a subgroup but for now we are gonna just delete that and we focus only on these three groups so we can create three different directories and now inside every directory we can create new accounts an account is like 
like any application or any website account right and what all information it's going to have it's going to have a username like email it's going to have a password it's going to have a linked website address where we log in so we're gonna store all this information inside that for example let's see in the university it's going to create here so now on the here in the center you click on right click and then add entry so the first entry will be for example so like uni mailbox that's the standard mailbox of the university so under all of these three folders I have created all the necessary accounts for example in university it's going to have a university mailbox and an examination management system account and then an attendance management system account similarly in social media is going to have like Facebook YouTube Twitter Instagram and telegram accounts and we're gonna store all that information here and similarly for the mailbox this guy is using three mailbox for now Yahoo Gmail and Outlook so we have added those values here so now let's let's come here to this let's suppose university mailbox right so in this university folder in this category so we have this entry uni mailbox so if you double click on this entry now you can add here the username so username is going to be the email address for example the name of this person is peter dot johnson at uni dot com so this is the email address you add the email address here and then you can add the password here so like basically you can add password on your own if you know something and the good thing is if you want a really strong password you need to rely on key pass to make to create the password for you so here you have this password uh, you have this option generate password so you click on that and then open password generator and now you need to specify some details here for example it's going to consider all of these characters and then like consider everything spaces if you want to consider the latin characters you can even add them but we just skip them for now and then length of the generated password should be 20 looks good and then advanced each character must occur at most once you know so you're just configuring how the password would look like and you want to make it as strong as possible so you just specify different details and then here in the preview it has created a lot of different passwords so they are all 20 in length as you said so you, what you need to do here you need to click one of them so you need to copy control C and then you hit OK and here in this one you need to paste it so I pasted that password which was created by KeePass it's a strong one none of this character has been repeated and it, it, it it's very secure so you need to put this password here you don't need to repeat it you click here and that's here that's it you need you have the password created and this is really essential if you're creating a new password for a different website uh, basically a new account for a, diff for a new website so you can create your username on your own and you don't need to think about the password you can get your password created from key pass and then you can use that password for that particular website and you can register your account so here you have the password you have the user account and you already saw how you how, how we can generate a password which is pretty cool but now maybe if you want to add some notes to this specific account for example you wanna write some notes like uh, standard email account for Juni so it could be any note you can just write some details and now you know that let's suppose this password needs to be re this password needs to be reset every three months then you don't need to think about it you need don't need to write it somewhere you have this option here expires so you can set an expiry date for this password so if you click on this one automatically this option is going to be turned on and you have the option here for example do you want to set it for three months so automatically after three months this password will be expired well not in the actual account but here in key pass you will get an indication here that how it looks like so you can here you have different timelines you can based on that you can set it for example 
so right now it's 9:47 p.m. I'm gonna set this option at 9:48. It's going to expire, right? And then you you're going to see what happens when a password gets expired, right? We'll get back to it in a second. Okay, so right now it's already 9:48 p.m. It means this password was set to be expired at 9:48. So you can see Uni mailbox mailbox account. It has been highlighted as expired so it's a reminder for you that means you need to basically extend the timeline or maybe just yeah extend extend all those time details so that's how you can set the expiry and not only that but you can do a lot of other cool stuff with this one so there is going to be some website on which you're going to use these credentials right so you can add the details of that website here for example you specify www. I don't know if it's like boston minus uni dot mailbox dot com and then it's going to be slash login so this is the web link of the login page on which you need to specify this username and then this password right so you can couple this URL with this username and password so all the details here under one account right so that's pretty cool and not only that but you can do some other cool stuff here if you go to this advanced option so you can add some additional key value pairs here right for example you can add a value it, it, th there could be some additional usernames for example if you have some admin account or if you have some standard account then you can add other details for example I'm gonna say like it's account one and I can specify any any value for this one and then protect value and process memory you are gonna hit it so it's gonna secure it and yeah you have this account one entry here similarly you can add basically multiple entries so this is you, you can just consider it like that so you have a Facebook account and inside Facebook you can create multiple those groups for every group you need to specify an additional password right so right now in this case we had this core account of Facebook but inside Facebook we have multiple groups all every group has its own password right so you can add those passwords here which are linked to that Facebook account which which is pretty cool and if you like save it let's turn off this option and let's go to advanced so you can always hit it and then you can see this account has this password right so there the good thing is they're all saved under the same umbrella which is pretty cool and apart from that you can add different attachments to that specific account right for example when this guy he joined the university they assigned him this username email address basically and a password right initially and then this guy was over the time resetting the password upgrading it updating it but at the time at that time university provided him with a document which had all his details right and he want to store a scan copy of that page with this account right so here in this advanced you can add file attachments with this one which is pretty cool so you're gonna click on attach and then attach file and then here I've just added some for example key pass image attachment and then I add it here so you can add images you can add different files which are linked to that specific account which would be a good reminder which would be a good 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 thing to store that you want to refer back in the future so that's that, that's cool so right now I'm gonna add here new file test file attachment and it's gonna give me a preview of that and then you click on OK and the good thing is you can open these images and files from here from within key pass so there is a built-in editor for that you double click on this one so you can see this is the file that you uploaded so you can see what information you wanna link with this particular account this is really cool and then you can even open this file you open the file there are some details about whatever topic it concerns to and then you can see the details so that's yeah that's I would say pretty cool
fooled with that so just a quick recap so your username it comes here then the password comes here and you don't need to create a password yourself that gets generated by keypass and the third thing you need to provide the URL fourth if you have some notes fifth if you want to get this expired at some point in time in the next under advanced tab if you want to have like multiple subgroups or well multiple sub accounts under that account you can add those details here and then in the last place file attachments related to that particular account so on top of that for every single account entry that you register in keypass you can use a feature which is known as auto type password feature and with this feature the good thing is you don't need to like copy paste the email addresses and the link addresses from keypass and then like you don't need to paste them in the browser but you can perform some auto type uh, yeah mechanism so I have created here an account and under immobilian so in under ma mailboxes folder I have one entry known as immobilian so immobilian has an account so this is one of my you email addresses and I added the email address here I added the password here and then I added the link here so this is the link the, this is basically the login page for this specific account so if I want to open this specific website and I want to log in in my account I can do it completely with few clicks so in the first place I need to open that web URL so right click on the entry hit URL and then open with Microsoft Edge you can decide which browser so you hit on that and you're gonna see that it has opened the web page right so the now the first thing you need to do put your cursor here under this email and once you have the cursor there then you open keypass and then you click on that entry and you hit perform auto type as soon as you hit this it's going to write the email address and the password of this account automatically in these two entries and it's even going to hit enter after this one so perform auto type and you can see it fills the email address the password and right away so you're logged in in that specific account so now I'm gonna sign out of this account and we can have multiple options for example so you can click on this entry and you copy the username and now the username is in it's on the clipboard and then you paste it right and if you want you can right click and then you can copy the password and you can password you paste it here and the good thing is that when you copy paste a username or password it stays on the clipboard only for these 12 15 seconds you see so right now I'm gonna copy password and you can see data copy to clipboard clipboard will be cleared in 12 seconds so it's a good security aspect so I would say that's pretty much it with how you can maintain different passwords maintain different accounts inside keypass like you can create different folders and you can create different accounts and you can add a lot of different things under every single account so there are cases in which you would like to basically export these passwords these accounts locally on, on some file right so you have that option here so if you go to file and then you can click on export and then here you have an option keypass csv so if you click on this one and then you need to specify where this file needs to be exported and we're gonna export it on the desktop it's okay database one.csv you hit save and then you click on OK and you see here you have the file exported so I was looking for an option if I can export only user accounts of a particular folder but somehow it's not possible at the moment so when you export it's going to export all accounts of that particular database so now if you open this file you can see all the accounts in this one 
and they're pretty readable pretty understandable format for example you're going to have account login name password website and comments for example if I see this one that I showed as a demo for auto type of the password so immobilian is the title and then this is the email address and then we have this password and then similarly we have the web link and then there is no comment so that's how you can export different entries different account entries but now there are there, there are cases and you want to import some entries into the current database for example so this guy he is using two other mailboxes which I have stored in a in a file so there is a specific format of the file that you want to import so you need to align with that and then you can import it so I have that file here inside this directory and I call it this proton gmx mail import file dot csv so this guy this he has two further mailboxes one on the gmx mail and one on the proton mail and he added his email address the passwords the links and, and all those details so now I would like to import this detail inside the database right so you click on file you click on import and then you're gonna click on generic CSV importer and then you click on keep a yeah here here is the file and then you hit OK so this is the data in the file at the moment then you click on structure so basically you can define different configuration details and then you hit on preview so the data was in the right format so it has already detected the title the username password and all these fields and then you click on finish and automatically you have it here in the database one so you can see these two entries are here so whenever you import something from outside it's going to automatically be received under this root folder and then you need to move it to that particular folder that it relates to for example so we select both of them and then you click on so you click so right click and then rearrange and then move to group and you want to store it under mailboxes and that's it now they're in mailboxes so you imported these two entries from outside so that's how you can import and export different entries different account details here in keep us and then lastly I would say if you want to search for a particular particular account or particular email address you can click on here search and you can choose if you want to put your research uh, put your search on the title or the username or maybe notes or URL or like there is a lot of details right so right now okay let's consider it with uh, as the default settings and I want to look for something like GMX mail I know I have an entry GMX mail and I have the corresponding credentials so I want to search only that so right now you can just consider that there are a lot of email addresses and we want to search on that so you click on find and you can see automatically it's gonna write you that under general and then you need to look into this mailboxes directory and here you can find this gmail uh, gmx mail and now for example here you have something like examination right so let's see if it's gonna detect that so with this built-in search you can right away go and you can see the credentials and uh, all the necessary details of that so yeah pretty pretty cool I hope this video would be really useful for you guys in storing and managing your passwords if you like the video give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel peace